Okay, so I bought this jewelry box for like $9. Oh, sorry, $8.99 at Sabres. And I think I overpaid because this thing is falling apart. I mean, yes, I am taking it apart, but as soon as I took the tape off of it, I realized that they were trying to hide this big, massive break in the bottom. I was afraid to breathe too heavily near this thing. But you know what? We're gonna destroy it anyway. So if I throw enough glue at it and pound it with a hammer, why am I pounding with a hammer? I don't know. Oh, look, I'm throwing staples at it now. Ashley, what, what are you doing? Clearly not my best idea. And in the process, the shelf came out and I had to sand it to get it back in, which caused me to get a nasty sliver. All right, I think this jewelry box is cursed already. And we haven't even gotten to the creepy art part. Okay, but why is it when I sand things and then wipe them down, it looks like I didn't do anything? What is that? Anyways, we'll worry about the outside later. Let's worry about the inside now, which reminds me we're making a haunted hidey hole. And this is going to be a big haunted hidey hole. Look, I'm adding a floor, which I'm proud of, apparently. Okay, hold on. Listen to my music. Isn't that lovely? Okay, goodbye, poles. Now let's paint it black. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <clears throat> and then I had these pieces of wood, which I'm breaking up into smaller pieces of wood, and I'm gonna light them on fire. Fire, okay, don't try this at home. You could burn down your house. <laughs> and I don't wanna be responsible for your house being burned down. But I thought all these little burnt sticks would look great on the wall of our haunted hidey hole. See, it looks like a fire happened in that room. Next, we need to do the floor, and I always go wood. But the other side, I'm doing tile, which I made out of Palmer. Hello, Emily, how may I help you? And how may you interrupt? my day. Fine, I didn't want you to sit on my lap anyway. Shwa bam! Ooh, look at that creepy floor. Now you might be asking, how are we gonna move between creepy floors? Well, with a creepy elevator. That's right, our residents are too lazy to take creepy stairs. Also, elevators are creepier than stairs anyway. They can like move on their own. Stairs can't move on their, well, okay, escalators exist. But who's ever heard of a haunted escalator? Actually, I'm sure there's a haunted escalator somewhere. All right, so after installing my haunted elevator, I added a chalk ring to my burnt room. Why would there be a chalk ring in my burnt room? Well, maybe because there was a seance in there. Look, I'm making little seance candles for a little seance room. It, is that not adorable? Look at them. Look at them on that ring. Now this room is just missing one more thing besides more candles. Yep, it's a Ouija board. Alert, we have a cuteness overlord. Overlord? I mean overlord. Emily. Emily's like, I am the cuteness overlord. <laughs> Emily, you wish. I mean, you are cute, but... Look at this, look at the Ouija board. It's hauntingly adorable. And like everything adorable, I must destroy it. I'm just kidding. Although, why do we have that feeling? When something's so cute, you just want to squeeze it to death. Or I guess I say we, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Anyways, so you might be asking, did the people who use this Ouija board start the fire? We didn't start the fire. <laughs> I could see where you would think so, you know, with candles and fire and lots of potential of burning things down with the fire. But actually, the fire started before. Okay, wait, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I know, it feels too early in the video to start a story. But once a story started, you can't stop it. So hold on to your butts, everybody. <laughs> wait, why, why did I say butts? Doesn't matter, I've already said it. So here we go, way back along time ago this building was an apartment complex with a super shady owner we'll we'll name him i don't know otis yeah otis is a good name well otis being super shady and all actually had no interest in being an apartment complex owner even though that's what his dad wanted him to do hold up watch me change this into a circle window Ah. Oh wait, we can do it better than that. Ready? Shwabam. All right, that's more of my style. Anyways, where were we? Oh yeah, back to Otis. So he doesn't want to be an apartment complex owner. He wants to be into the science. I guess I'd, that would just be called a scientist. But the science crew, science team, like the gaggle of scientists wouldn't let him into the, their club because you don't even remember he was super shady. Okay, look, let me give you an example. Whenever the scientists had their scientific meetings on Wednesdays, he would say super unethical, weird things like, yeah, let's run that dog medicine on humans and see if they grow a tail. Although a, a tail would be kind of cool. Okay, no, he'd be like, what if we gave that little boy an extra appendage? And the science community would be like, no, you can't can't do that. And they for, forbid him, forbade him. They, they prevented him from being a scientist and joining their club. But Otis was like, I don't need your club anyway. I have a whole apartment complex full of people that I could experiment on. And that's what he did. He went back to his apartment and experimented on all the tenants. He was trying to turn them into human 
animals. Wait, humans are animals. Well, you know what I mean. Like crossbreeding humans. No, not crossbreeding. Mutinizing? Yes, he was trying to turn them all into mutants. But when the people in apartment four started complaining about growing extra ears on their forehead, Otis knew he was going to get in trouble. So he burnt down apartment four, destroying all evidence, including the people. See, I told you Otis was shady. But unfortunately, fire spreads, thus shutting Otis's whole business down. But I mean, really, it was his own fault. So what does Otis do? He reopens the apartment complex as a mall. He didn't want to have to deal with whiny tenants anymore. And so now he has customers to experiment on, which is why you might be asking why, why I'm making this noodle soup. Well, he's got to sell something in the mall. Nobody's going to come to an empty mall with nothing to buy. Unfortunately, Otis has nothing to sell. So most of the stuff he sells is just the customers back to themselves. So this is his noodle business where he sells human noodles, you know, full of that experimental flavor. Anyways, so back to the beginning. Remember the room that's burnt? I know it was a while ago, but you might be asking, why is that still burnt if Otis redid everything and made a mall? Well, because that's the room that everything started in. And every time Otis tries to remodel that room, the former tenants who are now ghosts undo everything because they're ticked off that Otis hasn't paid for his crimes. And he's now a big successful businessman. Well, I guess he he's not that successful. It's hard to be successful when you keep, you know, unaliving your customers. Oh, and your business is haunted. Okay, but so how did the Ouija board get there? Well, if movies have taught me anything, it's that angsty teenagers and their dog cannot stay away from ghosts. It's like, it's like crack to them. They're always showing up with their Ouija boards. <laughs> Dang hooligans. Do I sound like a crotchety old person? <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> Anyways, so Otis can't keep them off his property, even though he tries. But, the, you know, they go in one room and they come out the other like a dang Scooby-Doo special. <laughs> so anyways, I'm done with the top floor. Now let's get to the second floor of my abandoned mini mall. My murder mini mall? To the makeover of my murder mall mini miniature. A miniature makeover of the murder mall. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm going with. Anyways, hello, Emily. So I have all these bricks and in the process of dyeing them better brick colors, they started making this weird noise. Listen, is that the sound of them dying? All right, who haunted my bricks? Actually, I couldn't be mad at putting real haunted bricks inside of a haunted hidey hole. Heck yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, as long as it doesn't stay in my house. <laughs> oh, look, I went to put this little light fixture in there, but it didn't fit in the hole. So I made the hole bigger with the wood burner. So on this project, I had to become like an electrician because I wanted more than one light. And so I had to hook them all together. And you might be asking, where'd you get the lights, Ashley? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I cannibalized some miniature kits that I didn't think I was ever going to use and stole the lights out of them. Eventually I figured it out and I got them all hooked up, but this light was not red enough. Evil enough? Oh, speaking of evil, <laughs> hello, Emily. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying Emily is evil. I'm just saying that she's not not evil and she's a cat. And so that makes her like a little bit on the evil side. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's factually accurate. Anyways, moving on. Check out my transitions. Shwabam. Shwabibi. And hold up, watch this. Tap, tap. These are gonna be for the elevator. See on this floor, the elevator's open and there's one of those creepy gates that goes across. Trust me, that's part of the story, which reminds me, do I need to recap real quick? Let me just recap. Emily, what are you doing? You're interrupting my recap. Get out of here. Very nice, we see your butt. Okay, so back to the flashback or recap, whatever. Okay, so Otis had an apartment building that he made into a mall and now instead of running experiments on his tenants, he's running experiments on his customers. Emily, what are you doing? You don't Emily. fit in there. <laughs> Emily, stop it. You're embarrassing me. Get out of there. Oh, you're so cute. I hate it. Look at you. Look at your little, don't fall off. I'm telling you, these cats leak out some sort of chemical that makes you adore them. No, it's more like a worship. It's like you're worshiping them because if they were not adorable, there's no way we would put up with it. Anyways, before I was rudely interrupted, let's get back to the story. Okay, so the people in apartment four who, you know, passed away, their spirits are still there and probably the spirits of any of the customers that don't make it either. So, you know, it's, it's, a crowded space, probably, uh, spiritually or hauntingly. Is that the same thing, hauntingly and spiritually? <laughs> probably not. It doesn't matter. Let's just say that the late tenants are, are pretty upset. 
Which is fair. I mean, come on. I'd be pretty upset if somebody ran experiments on me and I passed away. And if you're wondering why I have a box of weeds, that's not supposed to be weeds, okay? It's supposed to be hair. I know, gross. But you know, when you run experiments on people, they might lose their hair. Which reminds me, so one of the experiments that Otis ran on his uh, customers was he, you know, he always wanted to be able to change the color of his hair as anybody would want to, but like instantly. So he spliced their DNA with octopus DNA because you know, octopuses can change colors. But instead of their hair changing colors, their hair just like fell out and they grew tentacles on their head. <laughs> Which, you know, that could be cool too. But the customers were upset and they threatened to sue. So he had to, you know, get rid of them. And you know, now the noodle shop upstairs serves a uh, octopus tentacle. And I know somebody is going to tell me that octopuses don't have tentacles. Explain to me if an octopus doesn't have tentacles, then what does? <laughs> Anyways, so this shop is going to be a tailor. But since Otis doesn't have any, you know, fabric really, except that box of fabric, ignore that. <laughs> He's using what he has at hand, which is the customers. Ooh, I know. Maybe that box of fabric is like the customer's clothes. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really see Otis being a good sewer. He must have people working these shops. Ooh, I know. Maybe he has the people who survived in the apartment complex fire working for him because they have nowhere to go. They're disfigured from his experiments and they don't have a home because it was burnt down. So they can't get any other job, right? I, I think that, that makes sense in some sort of twisted way. But the one thing that a tailor would need, demented or not, is a sewing machine. So that's what we're making. And look, rather than cut out this tiny little circle, I just use the hole punch. Because because sometimes I'm smart. Sometimes. I don't know why I got so defensive. But a clean sewing machine is not creepy at all, especially in a demented tailor shop. So I dirtied it up with some, you know, red stuff. And this is the part, I know some of you are going to argue with me. I know a sewing machine should sit this way, but hear me out. You can't see all the cool details then. So yes, the sewing machine is backwards, but I don't care. Do you, do you want to fight? Please don't fight me. <laughs> My best move is a weak slap to the cheek. And probably the butt cheek. Anyways, so look, I'm painting this palette. And why am I doing that, you ask? So that I can peel it off. Okay, yes, this is something that I would do for fun. Look, we all have our things, okay? But it also makes for a decent skin jacket. Look at that. It looks realish, right? Now we have to do the other side, which I'm thinking a sweet shop. And I didn't mean like sweet as in cool. I mean like sweet as in cakes, you know, like sugary things. Although they could be sweet sweets. Anyways, so I'm just making a counter to hold over sweet, sweet sweets. And if there's one thing that a demented bakery is worried about, it's sanitation. So I'm making these little cardboard things to put our cakes into, which are little bear shapes. Look at them. They're adorable. Are they demented looking? No, but, and hear me out, you don't know what they're made out of. They could be made out of toenails and ground up bones. And now I'm making a cake plate to hold cakes, presumably. Are these cakes in shapes of maggots? Yes. And who knows, maybe those cakes are made out of sugar, though probably not. In fact, I'm pretty sure that they're poison cakes. See, that's how he's getting his experiments into the customers is through the poison cakes. Nobody can resist cake and mushrooms. I mean, just ask Alice. Which, can we discuss this? Why does Alice eat random mystery cake off the floor? Or worse, she drinks random mystery liquid inside of bottles. She sort of deserved what she got. And her parents should be ashamed of themselves for not teaching her to not eat random mystery cake. Although, to be fair, I don't know how old Alice is, but my five-year-old eats random stuff too. So maybe it's not that far-fetched, but I think Alice is at least 10, right? So she should know better. Anyways, we're done. What do you guys think? If you don't think that the sweet, sweet shop and the tailor are creepy enough, next we'll do the basement and that's where the real fun happens. Which I'm going to think of right now. Okay, maybe not right now, but I'm going to make this basement look more basement-y with basement stuff like these poles. Pretty sure basements have poles and pipes and all sorts of weird things. And look at that, this glue cap could be a valve. I think basements have valves, right? At least murder mall basements should. Am I just gluing all my junk to the back of the back wall? Absolutely I am. But you know what? One coat of black paint and you won't even notice that it's junk. See? That looks like a that looks like a good basement, right? But if Home Alone has taught me anything, a good scary basement needs a boiler. Or a wood burning furnace. Which is that the same as a boiler? I think they're the same thing. Or maybe it's that a boiler can be wood burning or gas. 
I'm not sure. I think it just heats up water, right? Because it's called a boiler and it boils water. I don't know. Maybe I should have paid attention more to Bob Vila. Anyways, so to make our boiler like rusty looking, I'm doing these bubbles. Look at these bubbles. Watch them. Ooh, they're so bubbly. See, it gives it like a rusted look. And then I just have to paint the hinges and bars so that they look more metal instead of wood because if a stove was made out of wood, that would be a pretty huge design flaw. And then here's the side of the stove. Boop which I painted and am now gluing on. See, there we go. We got one boiler stove wood burning thingy. Pretty sure that's the official name. And then I'm adding a whole bunch of little mirrors because I want the light that we're gonna put inside to reflect and look like fire. But we need something for our fire to heat up. So I'm making little tinder sticks out of this wood, but some of this wood needed to be better wood shaped. So I had to carve it and jab it for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> and then I glued it all in and started to paint it. But then I realized that the glue was not dry and so it all came out. You know what? Sometimes I don't think things through, okay? But it's fine. I fixed it. It's good. Now we just gotta add the bones. And you might be thinking, Ashley, why are there bones in the in the boiler? They can't be a very good heat source. Well, if you notice, I'm putting the boiler right underneath the elevator. That's right, we're gonna get to the rest of the story. And look at that fire. Does that not look like real fire? I just wish I could make it twinkle. I haven't figured that out yet. Anyways, I should get on with the story. So if you remember, Otis bought an apartment building and then it burned down and he made it into a mall and he was running experiments on all the customers. And then, you know, any customers that were left over and didn't make it through his experiments or, you know, complain too much. Well, he would use them as mall merchandise. Otis has a noodle shop with interesting noodles. And then he has a tailor with interesting choices of fabric. And then he has a sweet shop where he's using cake to bait the people into taking the experimental drugs. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this makes sense. But hold up, look at my little meat grinder. Isn't it cute? <laughs> I mean, as far as meat grinders go. And you can probably see where the rest of the story is going because you know a meat grinder in a basement can only mean one thing, especially if the boiler is right below the elevator. Yep, the elevator opens, drops the, you know, experiments into the boiler slash oven and cooks them into the food or clothing or whatever they're doing. And no, the story is not like Sweeney Todd because Sweeney Todd was a barber, not a scientist, experimenter. <laughs> They're totally different stories. I didn't rip anything off, I swear. But you might be asking who's running all this because Otis is only one person, right? He can't be running all the shops and coming up with the experiments and doing the stuff in the basement. So it turned out that there were survivors of the apartment complex fire. Do you remember there was a fire? I don't know, it was a long time ago. Anyways, Otis trapped all the survivors in the basement and he makes them work for for him, which is a whole nother level of evil because not only did Otis mangle these poor people from the fire and the experiments, he's now forcing them to work for him and all they want to do is go home, but there is no home anymore because Otis burned it down and now they're trapped there forever. And I don't, I don't know where the rest of the story should go. Other than maybe they rise up against Otis and make him an experiment. Ooh, but hold up, check out my sign. Bright Plaza was changed to Fright Plaza, get it? Because the dang hooligan kids keep graffitiing Otis's mall. Or maybe it's the ghosts in the mall. They're trying to like keep people away so that they don't, you know, get experimented on. Nah, I'm pretty sure it's the same kids that were doing the seance in apartment four, if you remember. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where the story's going. I feel like the story could be really good if I were an actor actual writer. Oh wait, I forgot. I am a writer. I'm coming out with a book October 15th. You can pre-order it. Links in my bio. But hear me out. It's not a book about stories. Thank God. It's a creepy craft book and there's no stories involved in making creepy crafts. I mean, unless you want there to be. But you know, if I were a story writer, I feel like I could have come up with a way better story for this art project with way more twists and turns that would have kept your attention. Which reminds me, are you still here? <laughs> I hope you're still here because look at that, we're done. Look at, look at our mini mall, our murder mini mall. Isn't it cool? And let's just take a minute to look at all these yummy details. Speaking of yummy, look at these yummy noodles. And of course the yummy circle window. <laughs> I don't think I'm using the word yummy correctly. Anyways. Okay, now let's look at it with the lights off because everything looks better with the lights off. Ooh, that's like 373% more spooky. <laughs> what do you guys think? And if you have a better story, please tell it to me in the comments because I would love to know where I messed up. Okay, thanks, bye.